Doctor Who, episode 10. Y'all are going to have to um, bear with me this week. I have a little bit of laryngitis going on. So this is it until um, New Year's Day. And it's clear that Chris Chibnall wanted to come full circle uh, with this episode. Which is why we had um, the Tim Shaw again. Um who appeared in the very first episode and, as we know, was responsible for the death of Grace. Uh, this would be the third actual mention of Tim Shaw this season, so the idea that we weren't getting repeats, no. Um, obviously, uh, was disingenuous. Um, I don't know if we've seen the last of the Tim Shaw. Uh, it's a pretty cool creature with teeth stuck to it and is evil. This is someone I could see being an overarching villain and, and reappearing again in another season. Who knows? Um, I, it's This episode was really a callback um, to the David Tennant episode um, with the Daleks, you know, capturing planets. And the Doctor made reference to it herself um, throughout it. That's what this reminded me of. Um, then there was also a call back to the doctor having a little chat with Davos, uh, Capaldi's doctor. So I think there was a little bit of flashback stealing, if you will, borrowing, um, from two different doctors. I, however, didn't find it nearly as compelling as either episode it sort of tried to bring together. Uh, with the exception of Graham. Graham vowing to kill Tim Shaw for murdering Grace really worked for me. Um, it, it felt real. If you could confront the creature or person that murdered the person that you loved, that you still grieve for, that you still miss deeply, his reaction made absolute sense to me. And it was for the first time I could really take him seriously. He wasn't being silly. He wasn't being the granddad. He wasn't trying to get anyone's approval. He just felt pain. And the pain was real. Uh, of course, the doctor did warn that if you kill Tim Shaw or put in jeopardy the people that we are trying to uh, save... You can't travel with me anymore. You're off the TARDIS. Um, and in that moment, you knew she meant it. Uh, the doctor, though she trusts her fam, which I really need her to stop saying, um, now, after having traveled and having a few adventures, uh, to the point where she knows she's pulling out grenades and she doesn't believe in, in taking life, but she can see the use in weapons on uh, inanimate objects. So she's trusting her team to follow through with her don't kill rule, um, which is a shock to them, right? But it's it's a measure of how much they've grown in her estimation that she is willing to put them into a position where they have to actively choose to follow her belief system. So you could say it as a sort of coming together. They were officially Team TARDIS. So the biggest suspense in this entire episode, as I said before, was whether or not Graham was going to kill Tim Shaw. So, how did they deal with this? Well, of course, a heart-to-heart -heart between Ryan and Graham. You have Ryan, for the first time, calling Graham granddad, telling him that he loved him, asking him to be the bigger person. So, this is the big emotional drama, as far as I see it, for this episode. And it is enough. It is enough for Graham to decide to be the bigger man. And he ends up shooting Tim Shaw in the leg and making Ryan promise not to tell. And together, they imprison the Tim Shaw for eternity. Here's the deal. This was all kind of cool. But what it really did for me is to remind me once again 
of the big overarching problem with this series. They have given Graham and Ryan a reason is on Detra, right? There is something connecting them. They have grace between them, even though they are not blood to each other. It bonds them in a way that they cannot possibly bond with Yaz. And never has it been more stark than in this episode where Yaz just basically ran around being smart, doing what needed doing, you know, um, willingly sacrificing to save Earth. When she knew the planet would attack her brain, she was willing to do this for Earth. And while that may have been heroic, it's all that they could give her. Because Yaz has no connection. She has no real connection to the Doctor. She has no real connection to Graham. You know? She just has no connection. She is absolutely the third wheel. And it's ten episodes in. And at this point, I have given up the very possibility of them figuring out what to do with Yaz when they don't have a Yaz-centric episode like Partition. Um, so, I hope that they can do something next season, but I realistically don't expect it. Uh, it she could be so much more. She could be brilliant. But they have sabotaged her character from the very start of the season. Now, everything is all is well that ends well. The people are saved. The stolen planets are returned to the original location. The new alien species no longer believes that Tim Shaw is, is their god. You know, the doctor had a chance to or to, to, to get philoso- philosophical. And talk about the beauty of travel and how the universe can surprise you. And how important it is to get out there and to explore. Um, It was a meh ending to a just okay season. Even, Even for all the highlights it did have. I love Jodie Whittaker as a doctor. I think she's brilliant. I love her energy. I love her smile. Um, I love just about everything about her. And that's a rare thing to fall in love with a new doctor in the first season. But she works for me. Um, Yeah, she really, really does. I think the show writers have some work ahead of them going forward. Because while they've figured out who the doctor is... Um, someone who's always on the run, who's energetic and full of life. Um, I don't think that there's well placed with the other characters on the show. And to be quite frank, I miss the Daleks. Exterminate. I miss the Cybermen. I miss the Sinatrans. There's so much I miss. So now that they have laid the groundwork, I hope they go back to what makes Doctor Who great and bring back some of the people the Doctor has battled. Even a new master would be great at this point. So to sum it all up, I'm going to have to say this episode gets a middling, this season gets a middling grade Um, despite its highlights, despite its wonderful doctor uh, the actors did their job but I think on more than one occasion the writers let them down alright, I'm going to end this so you're not tortured with having to listen to my voice anymore and uh, I'll be back to talk about the doctor um on New Year's Day. See you later, Whovians.